Welcome to Fading Memories, a supportive podcast for those of us caring for a loved one with memory loss. I am hanging in there. Yeah. I wanted to check in. I know it's just you, but you you and I have a passion in common, which is cycling. And you're yes. Still, <laughs> you're still out there riding. I may just have to go out by myself. We've had enough rain and chilly weather that it's been easy to just walk dogs. Yes. But that's getting boring. <laughs> yes. So how are you uh, handling all this insanity with this virus and shutting? I've been very fortunate in that um, I have the bicycling community. I live in a community of people. Um, so, and the pool at our community is still open. Uh, our clubhouse is still open. They haven't been having functions, but I'm able to go there for yoga and exercise. And there's just, it's just like three of us that go there. So it's, it's so you can do easy. your social distancing and yoga, right? Yes. And you're, yes. In, you're in Florida. I am in Florida. Okay. Yes. Yes. I went for a ride today. That's what they, I... they closed the trail. They've closed all the state parks and the state trail. And so we're having to ride roads, which is a little more dangerous. <laughs> yeah. You ride the recumbent bikes, right? Or the tricycles. Yes, recumbent tricycle. Yeah. Okay. Cause I'm a, I'm a road cycling person. So I'm used to that. The trails kind of drive me bananas because I've had people with leashes, you know, the dog is oh, across yeah. the path and that's scary. And people, you know, moms will walk four and five across, which is really annoying. Or people have their earbuds in and you're yeah. like bike on the left. And they're like, la, 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 la. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So I don't mind the street, but we moved right at the end of January. We blew up our life and then our life blew up again. So not really yeah. fond of 2020 right now. So I love your studio, by the way. It's oh, really thank nice. you. It's very, it's, it's a lot nicer than the closet. <laughs> <laughs> I have, um, you know, heating and air conditioning as needed. So the right. closet got either really cold or really hot. <laughs> So I wanted to check in with you, you and George, and I should say that we are talking to Susan Straley. She is the author of Alzheimer's. Ah, there we go. George. <laughs> Thank and you. The journey continues Alzheimer's tripping with George. <laughs> I haven't finished that one, but I did finish the first one. Yeah. I had a little brain fart there. You know, for a Cause second. I, w I remember you, we had mentioned we were going to talk about being shut in with your loved one right now and some of the activities that you might <coughs> some of the special concerns and some of the activities that you might have that cough is uh <laughs> not covid <laughs> she was she was sucking pollen and exhaust fumes i know because i'm a cyclist too and there there's been some days because we're right at the very we're at the very beginning of our spring here in northern california and sometimes I walk the dogs and I come home and it's like, why is my chest tight? Oh my God. <laughs> no, no, no. It's yeah. just allergies. I haven't been around anybody but my husband. And yeah. So it's, it is. It's allergies. In fact, I did go. I, cause I, I was concerned cause I'm sharing a house with another woman and I thought that I might um, spread something to her. And plus I've, you know, my bike friends, I, there's a difference between social separation, distancing, and isolation. Mm -hmm. And I thought, um, maybe I need to isolate a little bit more. So I, um, I went to the doctor, I did call them and they have a special hotline you press and they give you directions on, you go to the parking lot and they tell you, then you call them again and they direct you into a door and you go right through into a waiting room. But, it was allergies. It's a nasal drip that's causing a cough and congestion in my bronchial tubes, not the lungs. So. Well, so you I'm good. <laughs> that's good to hear. <laughs> you don't want to uh, catch COVID on top of the allergies causing bronchial yeah, yeah. stuff. So yeah. you and George had a similar struggle that my mom and I had until recently. I think I mentioned to you that she fell, so she's bed bound right now while her leg heals. I'm not sure. Yes. I haven't been able to see her for a week and a half, 
<clears throat> so that's a struggle. Not that visiting her was fun, but not being able to check in at all and, and put eyes on her and see how she's doing or not doing is a challenge. Because one day before they told us to stop going, she was awake and chatty and she, you know, the caregiver got her to laugh. And so I got a cute little video of her. And then I went like two or three days later and she was at lunchtime, she was asleep. And I was like, and the hospice nurse that's helping the staff take care of her, <clears throat> excuse me. She's like, because they don't know what her baseline was before. They don't know if the fall and breaking her leg accelerated her decline or we're, I I can't figure out where she's at because I can't see her and it's very frustrating. It's so. very hard. I bet you really want to manage her care and let her know that you're there. And I, I just can't imagine the frustration and grief of not being able to be yeah, there. Yeah, that the 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 moments of feeling, you know, weepy over not being able to see her is a little strange because like I said, visiting her lately was not pleasant she was she's getting very combative and yeah. she likes to scratch when she's irritated so oh. um yeah she's drawn blood on several people but my biggest fear is that the enough time will have elapsed that she will not remember me at all she doesn't remember yes. me as her daughter she thought i was her best friend and because of a lot of the medical stuff that's happened since christmas um a, a little bit of that oh look that's the friend that takes me out and we do fun things had evaporated which i was trying to fix Ooh. yeah because it's like i don't want to go visit her and just have contentious rrr, or just sit yeah. there and you know whatever and that's kind of where we were at so now my fear is is that she won't know me and she won't trust me and it'll it's and i've lost her even more so yeah you know i may actually even though i not sure that she'll be able to visually function with a FaceTime call or a Zoom call like this one. I know the community uh -huh. that she lives in is doing those, but her visual processing is so bad that unless it's a really a computer or a big iPad, I don't, I don't know that she'll be able to focus enough to see that it's me. So I don't know. And, and her hospital bed is facing the hallway. So her back's to the window. So I can't even go knock on the window and talk to her, which is not necessarily a good idea for a lot of people with a lot of reasons. <laughs> um, Especially because they, well, they might want, there be, they might be like, well, why can't I come out with you? And so you might actually yeah. trigger like escapism. Tipa Snow likes to call it um, elopement syndrome, <laughs> which is a much nicer term than trying to escape. But mm -hmm. so, well, I, I'll, I'll make that decision the next few days of whether or not I try any of those things or, the hospice nurse should call today or tomorrow and let me know what's going on this week. There's a, there's a lot of families and love, uh, loved ones that are dealing with this right now and not being able to go into the homes and see their loved ones. So it's got to uh, bring up a lot of guilt, frustration, anger. Yeah, I don't uh, have, but a lot of, a lot of grief, a lot of grief. Yeah, yeah it's, 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 it's hard. hard. So I don't, I don't know what to expect. So I'm channeling it into, checking in with people that have been on the podcast before and you know most people i don't know if i have to remind them but george is no longer with us but what i started to say before i went on my little tangent was george was really big about picking up stuff off the ground and just uh -huh. my mom is the same way like tidy 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 oh did you drop this it's like oh no please don't pick this. <laughs> and I cannot imagine what that would be like right now. Well, there was something, oh, that we were walking the dogs this morning and there was a little, one of those little to-go containers and I don't know what had been in it. It was brown and mm -hmm. the dog, of course the dog stopped and I had to kick it away. Whereas normally I would have picked it up and thrown it in the trash, but now it's like, I'm, I'm going to be really careful about what I touch because you have to be, but you know, how did you handle that with George when he was alive and we had less of this worry to to think about? Well, if that was a thing. Um, let me let me change where the video is helping me. I see it's chopping off my head. But there we'll you go. This, That's this better. Works a little bit better. I don't know. Um, there you go. English. We're both wearing purple. <laughs> oh, maybe I'll sit lower. How about that? Perfect. Okay. 
<laughs> um, okay, so we didn't have the COVID to worry about. And I wasn't that worried about germs. I mean, he was just picking up leaves off the table and trying to eat them, you know, when we were out on the picnic table. Um, so he was, I, I didn't worry about it. <laughs> but now they really have to worry about it. Um, especially if you're in a public place, like if you're going to a grocery store and you have to bring your loved one along, how do you keep them from touching things unless you put gloves on them, maybe? If you yeah, that would those. be a good idea. I can't imagine trying to do that with my mom, but that's better yeah. than she always seemed to find the the tissues people dropped. Oh yeah, you really don't want the that. <laughs> I didn't want them, you know, nine months ago when it was just ew yuck. But now yeah. for sure I don't want it. It's like yeah. you know, I'm not a germaphobe. I don't worry about you know too much stuff. Mm -hmm. just, you know, I think worrying about it is just as bad as other things well that i thought that until a couple weeks ago anyway <laughs> mm -hmm. so yeah that that is a concern but I, I i really don't know how it's an extra it's an extra concern right now yeah um probably trying to keep them at home as much as possible but like george was he wanted to go do he wanted to go um and a lot of people, everybody's different, but a lot of people are like that with dementia and it's hard. I um, think, I think one thing you could for somebody like George, maybe like, I know I'm running low on cosmetic items. And I told my husband the next time we go to target, which is still open, I'm in the San Francisco Bay area. So we've been on shelter in place. This is week two. Last Thursday is when the entire state went on, you know, mandatory shelter on place. Wow. So yeah and today we're recording this on march 25th so yeah it's <laughs> been uh interesting and I, yeah. I when i told him i said maybe we could just put in an order because i know you can do that i have to figure out which app for target to do that just put in what we need and then they can deliver it to the car so that might be an option for people who need to get out but don't necessarily want to run the risk of them picking up strange things or you know because they are more um, it's not vulnerable, I guess is the right word, but they're in a higher risk group, you know, getting in the car and at least going because we move, when we moved, we're on a much busier street. We were on a court before, so that's not difficult. Mm -hmm. And my husband was coming. He's like, you know, everybody's supposed to be staying home and there's all these cars going up and down the street. And I said, you know, if you just get in your car and drive around, you're still social distancing because you're in the car. You're not around anybody else. And he's like, Oh yeah, that's a good point. I'm surprised my husband hasn't done that yet. <laughs> <laughs> he's a real estate broker, so he has nothing to do right now. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. He's, um, he's, he's losing his mind a little bit. I think. Yeah. He's, he's vacuuming a lot. <laughs> we have a, we extended the patio and it's, um, sand and it hasn't compacted all the way down. And so the dogs keep bringing in a lot of sand on the, the oh height. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you're vacuuming and yeah, sweeping all the time. Yeah, yeah. It's either that or you're like crunch, 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 crunch. crunch <laughs> <the floor. laughs> and then yeah, and that's ruining the floor. Yeah, yeah. And it's like, and it's just you know, we're we're fairly tidy people. We're not really interested in having like grungy floor. I don't think I could live on the beach actually. Now that I think about it, because that would drive me bananas. Just constantly this fine amount of grit on the floor all the time would just drive mm -hmm. me bananas so well and there were things that we used to do that now and a lot of my friends that are still our caregivers uh, do or did <laughs> but now they've closed a lot of the city parks they've closed the beaches they've closed the state parks so you can't go like sit on a bench or go for a little walk in nature uh as easily um you can walk around your neighborhood uh, and that's probably a good safe bet. And I have seen neighborhoods now doing like COVID parades. Um, every, every evening at 630, they do, you know, if you want to go for a walk, that's the time to go for a walk and people will be out on their lawns or walking or on the go-kart or bicycle or whatever. Um, it's just an opportunity to say hi to your neighbors. So that, that's a kind of cool idea. Yeah. And if you've got somebody with dementia in a neighborhood like that, that is perfect. You'd go sit out on the driveway and just wave at folks or be part of the parade. Yeah. Yeah. My mom would have loved that. 
Now we're we're very let's see we're about two ish blocks from a regional trail, and mm -hmm. they have not closed that. It would be a challenge because it's you know long stretches between major roads. Not when you're when you're walking, they're long stretches. When you're on your bike, they're not that far apart. Uh -huh. And so we can walk down there and um, it goes in two different directions for miles. So we can do that. And everybody is being really good about the social distancing. It's a little bit harder with the dogs. We walked this morning and this one mom and her little boy, he was probably about two or three. And he's like reaching out. He yeah. wanted to pet the dogs and the dogs, you know, he could pet the dogs. It's fine. You know, I don't, I mean, my dogs don't have COVID. I haven't been around anybody with it, so they're not carriers, but I understand her, you know, her not wanting him to do that. And the dog, when, when she stopped him from about to pet the, the middle dog, she was like, huh, you can just tell she was like, I want to, I want the little human to pet me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah, so it is. It's hard because I've been trying to avoid petting dogs because if I've got the virus on my hand, because I've touched a doorknob or something and I pet the dog, then the, somebody else comes along and pets the dog and then rubs their eye, they get the COVID. So yeah. you're not supposed to be petting strange dogs. Uh, that okay. is true. So mm -hmm. it's the very first, so about a, a little, little more than a week ago, the very first shelter in place day, there was, it was a Tuesday, which my husband normally has a meeting so usually the three dogs and I go out. We don't go that far because our oldest has some pretty serious arthritis in his back legs and he weighs uh -huh. like 76 pounds. So I cannot carry him home with the other two <laughs> dragging me along and he won't ride in the wagon. So there's a, a harness that you can get that helps hold up their, their center uh -huh. and, it, and it's got a shoulder strap and we'll probably have to, we should have invested in that earlier, but um, we'll have to get that sooner rather than later, I think, because some days he has good days and some days he doesn't. It's hard to know. Yeah. But this one, per so this was Tuesday, whatever it was. Today is Wednesday, right? I'm so mm -hmm. confused. Today is Wednesday, the 25th of March. Okay, so a 2020. Week <laughs> no kidding. So a week ago, this past Tuesday, we walked along the trail. We actually took like a four and a half mile walk, which I was shocked the old guy could do that. Not my husband, the dog. And. <laughs> And everybody was, I mean, I'm like, I don't remember seeing this many people on the trail. And I said, I don't normally walk this direction or this far, but everybody was like, oh, hey, hi, are you very okay? You know, it's all good to see you. And everybody was like six feet or more apart. And it was- Oh, nice. Yeah. So it's, it's a big enough trail. Um, there was one, I think it was a Friday. It was really gorgeous. One of those like- I think, but they were closing the- uh... Uh, trail here uh, because people were traveling to get to the trail because they're bored and so they're like let's go to the Withlacoochee trail and, uh, and ride so there's it was groups that were riding driving to the trail and riding and mm. using the restroom so they're bringing the COVID from the uh, Tampa Bay area which is very high uh, higher incidents of COVID yeah, spring break and people. bringing it to our area and touching all kinds of stuff and who knows. So they just closed everything down and we're having trouble. I just read today about the Appalachian Trail too. Um, it's crazy. It's it's very crowded. The parking lots are crowded. The facilities and you know people are you know hiking far away from anything. So you're going to share a snack if somebody's hungry and you know, then crazy. you go back home and you and you share it at home, <laughs> the COVID. Yeah, they had to shut down the, um, the Marin Headlands. So it's the Golden Gate National Recreation Area because, uh -huh. you know, San Francisco's got so many people and they all, you know, they're like, well, let's go walk in nature. And <laughs> lots of them thought about that. It was impossible to keep the social distancing apart. Yeah. So yes, it's definitely, it's interesting. Yeah. Wow. It's, it's nice that people are getting out and they're, you know, they're not just sitting at home and drinking themselves really? into a stupor or eat, picking On out. On social or, media. <laughs> yeah. I know there's only well, so thank much. thank goodness, actually. Thank goodness for social media. I think it's probably helpful that, like, we had our shelter in place order and then it was like, oh, we're going to make this easy for you guys. Rain, <laughs> which oh. we have not had. It's like, you know, the state obviously has um, bigger issues. 
And yeah. we did have pretty good rainfall the last season, but we are way under what we should have had for this current winter. And we're not hearing the drought word, probably because there's bigger worries. But, you know, it's like the governor said, mandatory shelter in place for the San Francisco Bay Area, which is seven counties, a couple million people, maybe up to three, I don't know. Yeah, probably about three would be my guess. And then it started raining. And then we had a couple nice days. And then he said, no, the whole state's going to be shelter in place. And then it rained some more. So it's been uh, a little bit easier to stay in. It's blue. It's supposed to rain today, but it's um, blue skies right now still. My husband said it was supposed to rain this evening. So what is Well, that? it's good oh. you're getting rain, though. <laughs> that that is rough. very true. And it does help well, keep people in. Yeah. But, I am... Um, I, when we were talking about, you know, what do you do with your loved one uh, when you're stuck inside for that many hours all the time or stuck in your area? And um, I, I was looking through the book to see if there was any, any stuff, and there is. Like, oh, yay. I had George do. <laughs> Movies, eating, which is 24 piece puzzle. He was at that level. Coloring. Sorting different poker chips or cards. I would I would shuffle up the poker chips and go, oh, George, I mixed these up again. Could you sort those for me? And he'd sort them and he'd be occupied with something so I could go do something else. Um, or cord, uh, coins, I would get a bunch of coins and say, would you sort these? Um, building wooden block towers, which is probably something you already have them do. Um, and then, of course, YouTube has all those exercise videos and walking videos and walk in place videos, and they have uh, yoga and chair exercises and stuff that you could probably do with your loved one if they're at that point. You know, it depends on what point they're at. That is true. There are some walk. things you, you jogged my memory. There are many, many worldwide, not just um, American museums, but other museums that are um you can take virtual tours online oh. so you know that would be beyond what my mom could do but that would probably be we have an 85 inch tv now That's something so we could do <laughs> yeah i know i keep threatening we're working on a 1500 piece puzzle so that's been interesting <laughs> let's see there's um, a lot of the national parks ha are either live streaming things or they have webcams that you can you know I know Yosemite is one of them. I think the Grand Canyon has them. So it's like, you know, I don't know how long I would want to watch the same scene, you know, five, 10, maybe 15 yeah. minutes of just kind of, this is a good meditation thing, but yeah. your loved one might appreciate it even longer, give you enough time yeah. to put together a meal. You know, they have those videos for um, dogs and cats about with butterflies and birds and you know, I just wonder if that would be something that would be of interest to someone at a certain stage. You know, I'm, it might be something your mother would like because it's pretty and it's moving and I don't know. Yeah, if I could Did get she her... watch TV at all? No. Yeah. It, it ha I have a um, lazy eye, so I don't have depth perception. So it's easier for me to understand her visual processing, which, or her lack thereof. But even then, sometimes it's like, I am like, this is right in front of your face and you're not seeing it. I don't understand. Yeah. So um, I bet you if she was here with our 85 inch TV, if she was close enough and a I didn't even you know, my dogs have each other. So I never even really thought about videos like that for them. I'll have to try it <laughs> one of these days, but you know, they might appreciate that. Just, it might be a way of like calming somebody down. Those are all really great ideas. I don't know. I don't know. You know, I, I bet you there's old on YouTube, like old dance party. But what was the what was the show from the fifties? <sighs> oh, um, a bandstand. There you go. Yeah, American <laughs> Bandstand. Because <laughs> for my day, it was um, Solid Gold Dancers. <laughs> yes, <disco>. yes. <laughs> You know, um, my sister is caregiving, uh, and she said, you know, I think I'm going to turn that tunes on today, and maybe we'll get some, we'll do some dancing. So, yeah, see, my mom, my mom was into TV and talk radio, so she liked to listen to things, 
So I think if her mind was good, she'd probably be a total podcast fiend, which kind of warms my heart thinking about that, obviously. Yeah. So music is not, um, it has not been easy to find tunes that she connects with. When I was talking to Richard earlier, he talked about the, um, oh shoot, the, oh, I'm going to have to think about that. I'm going to have to listen to the episode again so I can, um, he was, um, the oh, podcast she, or the or the documentary about music and um no he there was a song that he found for his wife and it triggered a memory of my grandmother my mom's mom and those are the songs that generally um she connects with which is really interesting so nat king cole you know lazy okay. hazy crazy days of summer but he was also doing yeah stuff um, that was popular when she was a child yeah probably, so probably. but her parents were like yeah and my grandmother listened to him when i was a child so it was reinforced so now i'm gonna have to remember that now i'll just have i'll have to listen to which song he was talking about <laughs> well i appreciate this little you know little short check-in I've, I've been trying to figure out what to do for people the episodes get listened to all the time like the ones from almost two years ago get listened to so i don't want to get too like do a whole th I, well, I didn't think i wanted to do a whole thing so i thought i'd do these little yeah, clips i think this is a p moment in history that will be of interest to people for many many years. probably richard and i were talking about how i think we're at a very the very beginnings of a huge cultural shift in our life and since mm -hmm. i'm not that old and my grandmother will be 102 in three days and my other grandmother lived to 91 with significant oh cognitive God. impairment. Yeah, I tell people, I'm like, oh, you're stuck with me, guy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just Lots at the beginning of, of phase two. Um, so I, you know, sometimes I, you see the news and what's going on and you think, ah, and then I'm like, you know what? I'm going to, I'm going to be around long enough to be able to read in a history book about this time in of our life and see how, how history judges what's going on and, there's no way that all of this, you know, people working from home and all of this, you know, disruption of our life doesn't change things going forward. And, you know, some of it might go you back know, to I'm the I'm already not using as much toilet paper. <laughs> <laughs> Just in case. I got to make it last, you know. <laughs> That's true. I know. So <laughs> I joke, well, I, when I bake, I use silken tofu to replace half the butter. We oh, went, good. it was Friday the 13th. I had told my husband, I said, you know, and he, he'd been ignoring the news. And I said, you know, honey, I said, I've been reading a lot about, you know, people are saying they don't think it'll happen, but they're getting a little bit worried about a, a national lockdown, national quarantine, kind of like they did in China. And, and when we moved, you know, it's just the two of us. And I'm like, the whole goal of downsizing and setting up this house was what what do we need to function really really well for everyday life because our other house was good for my other business and for entertaining and you know stuff you don't necessarily do every day so this one is everyday life thank god <laughs> considering <laughs> and so we weren't you know stockpiling beans and you know diced tomatoes oh. and stuff we had enough you know for a couple weeks we we weren't going to go hungry anytime soon and so I said, you know, we might want to go to the store and just pick up some extra, you know, whatever's I'm, I'm not, we're not, we don't need to like jam the pantry full of stuff. And he thought I was out of my mind. And we got into a nasty fight. We go to our grocery store. There was not one box of pasta, including the wheat pasta, no white rice, the brown rice and the quinoa were still there. No freaking tofu. I'm like, what? You people left all the healthy grains on the shelf, but you took my tofu from a cookie. <laughs> <laughs> so he did get tofu a couple days ago. He's like, yeah, we can have cookies. I'm like, oh, you got tofu. I'm like, I'm like, who would have ever thought I'd be excited about you getting tofu? <laughs> and I know I'm in California, people, but tofu is only good for baking, I'm not into. Oh, I guys stick a little in my smoothies, but yeah. It does work for that too. So yeah. yeah, no, I was like, it's crazy. And then no toilet paper, no paper towels. And in my search for tofu, I went to the grocery store in the same town where my mom's residence is. And it's, it's a town that unfortunately during the last giant crisis we had 10 years ago, 
12 years ago, it got real rough. This is a safe way that I don't know if they still do, but it had a basically an armed security guard by the front door. Oh, wow. They do still have a security guard. The safe ways that we go to do not. This one does. I'm like, there's no way that they don't have tofu at that safe way. Nope, they didn't have it there either. <laughs> it, was wow. so, like, it was just so bizarre. So our pantry has got a lot more stuff in it than normal. You know, we're not obviously going out because none of the restaurants are open. So I'm very yeah. glad I don't have to try to manage my life with my mom here. That would be, that would be yeah. horrendous. Because I know a lot of people, I've got one other gal I'm going to check in with. Um, because I know all of our all, all of our adult social programs are closed, and her dad went to one four days a week, so she's stuck with him at home, twenty four seven. Oh my god! I better check in on her. <laughs> yeah, check in on her. Uh, which I thought it was very sweet yesterday on Twitter. It was Margaret, uh, memory melt, I think, and she said that. Um, her her dad's birthday and she couldn't go in the nursing home so she stood at the entryway and they brought him out to the entryway and she had the kids on the video singing happy birthday and she sang him happy birthday so that was sweet was i smiling. did see that one and i had to stop looking at those because i'm like these are starting to depress me because you don't know that that's not their last birthday and that's not how you want to spend it with them even yeah. if even if all you do is have a basic sandwich in the dining room with them, that's still better than, than that. So it's, mm -hmm. it's going to be really interesting to look back at this time and see how we see how we are in 10 years <laughs> or yeah. 20 years. <laughs> Maybe it was, would have been better to hold their hand and hug them. It's insane. <laughs> it's just crazy, crazy time. Yeah, it is. It's different. It's that is true. I think I think we're going to be better people when it's over. I hope a lot of people will be. I think so. That's my hope. And I, I since I can't see my mom, I'm trying to do what I can for all the people out there, the caregivers, and yeah, that helps. That helps good, keep me from thing. going nuts. Yeah. All righty. Well, thank all you right. so much. I'm glad you're Thanks. still getting on your bike. Hopefully, if it's yes. not raining Friday, I'll go out. Yes. Good. Take <laughs> care you. of yourself. Uh-huh. Bye-bye.